hello, you're listening to eBird Online, and I'm back with another review. I'm here to shed some more light on what I think on one of the couples from this season's 90 Day Fiancé, and this week's lucky couple are Emily and Kobe. Guys, I bet they simply can't wait to hear what I've got to say. So this couple have spent the season busy lurching from crisis to crisis. And honestly, after seeing this week's episode, I couldn't help but think they're doing everything in reverse. First up, they got pregnant. Then they decided to live together. Then they got pregnant again. And now something new. This week, they've decided to get to know each other's personalities. (laughs) Oh, Lord. Guys, let me help you out. Emily's a rude and controlling narcissist. She's always, always very, very disrespectful and she lacks a sense of humour. That's Emily. Kobe, on the other hand, is a weak-willed pushover who makes very bad decisions. Guys, don't mention it. (laughs) Guys, if you haven't done so yet, please consider subscribing to my channel. It's a lot of fun over here. Come on, join the eBird family. Make eBird a happy eBird by smashing the big red button marked subscribe. Also, don't forget to smash the like button. And if you don't want to miss any of my content and my upcoming UK 90 Day Fiancé reviews, please don't forget to hit the notification bell. Thanks, guys. Right, and so without further ado, I give you Emily and Kobe. So as we all know, Emily's currently with child yet again, but she's still wanting to keep this all a secret from her family. (laughs) (laughs) you'll be okay my love you'll be okay and Emily tells producers I want more kids but I'm just not happy with the timing and Kobe said I really hate this position I'm in I hate holding on to this secret it doesn't feel right and so next time we see Kobe he's trying on wedding tuxedos and he's with Emily and some of her family and he lets Emily know that temperature's coming down uh what yes guys that's right it turns out temperature is a person And not, of course, the degree of heat in, well, any given substance. And it transpires that this guy Temperature is originally from his home country, Cameroon, and he's now living in Ohio. And as Kobe was explaining this, Emily's dad said, Oh, Temperature, it's a person. I thought you were talking about the weather. Well, Emily's dad, winter is coming. (laughs) For you and all of your family. (laughs) So that very evening, Kobe goes to the hotel to meet up with Temperature. They sit and chit-chat about things, but Kobe wastes no time in telling him that Emily's controlling. Temperature nodded sagely and said, well, it's something I know a lot about. He says it happens an awful lot in America. The women always want to boss the men around. Here in America, the men are living in houses like ladies. (laughs) Guys, (laughs) I can't even say it without laughing. Temperature, what are you talking about? The men are living in houses like ladies. What are they transitioning? And then Temperature spends the next, I don't know, 10 or 15 minutes trying to convince Kobe to move to Ohio. He makes Ohio sound like it's a paradise. And he also told them there was a large African community there. And guys, I can definitely tell this is one for the future. I can tell by the look on Kobe's face, he wants to move there. But back to his favourite topic. Temperature tells Kobe, you need to put your foot down with Emily. The minute you give her the right to make decisions, you're signing your own death warrant. (laughs) He's nothing if not dramatic. I'd like to proffer the following. The minute you tell Emily what to do, you're signing your own death warrant. I'll tell you that, Kobe. And Kobe tells production, Temperature is speaking a whole lot of sense. And Kobe says he needs to reawaken his African spirit. Really, Kobe? Emily's been busy reawakening your African spirit every night. And that solely has led you to the problems that you're currently in. And then he said he needs to be the man he used to be. What, single and carefree? (laughs) Not likely. And so that evening, the whole family go for a meal to meet temperature. And guys, this was the family meal from hell. I cringed less at meet the fuckers. Emily's parents started out saying they were really happy that Kobe had a friend in America. Guys, don't speak too soon. And they all sat down and ordered and and Emily ordered a lasagna for Kobe. And Temperature said, she orders your food for you. And Kobe said, she wants to do everything. Kobe, come the F on now. You like it when Emily orders for you. I don't know why, but you always seem to ask her to do it. And then Temperature decides to climb onto his pulpit. And he tells everybody that Kobe needs to tell Emily what to do within the relationship. The man gets to tell the woman what to do. And then in a million dollar statement, he said, I'm not married yet, but... 
He then carried on with a whole load of claptrap about the man being dominant and how they should have maximum respect from their ladies. And guys, you know what I've said about Emily in the past. She is rude and she is unnecessarily dominant. But temperature, you need to hear this for yourself before running off your mouth. And then he said, Kobe, have you told them? Kobe's a prince and is from a royal family. And everybody went, wait, what? You're a royal? And he said, yep, Kobe's dad's a king and he's a prince. And the whole family were bemused. And Emily said to production, this is huge news. I mean, where's all the money? Do we have a castle in Cameroon? But then as she so often does, she snatches negativity from the jaws of positivity. And she said, this is a massive thing. Why wouldn't he tell me? Why did I never know this? Well, Emily, let me fill in the blanks for you. Kobe previously told us all that his mum and his dad weren't even married. His dad had a different wife. So dot, 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 literally dot, dot, dot. I think it's fair to suggest he has no rights to any royal kingdom that may or may not exist. And she turned to Kobe and said, are you a king? Are you a prince? Do we have loads of land or do we have a castle? And Kobe said, no, it's just me and myself. That's it. And Temperature said, the reason I'm telling you is that Kobe has to have the final say. If you're married to an African, he's the head of the family and you belong to him. And Emily's dad piped up, um, there's a reason why you're not married, Temperature. And all of his family say to production that they're very worried and that Emily will never agree to be told what to do by Kobe. And Emily pondered, maybe I've seen a bit of this from Kobe before when he told me to shut the F up. No, you didn't, Emily. You were completely in the wrong that day and he was right to tell you about yourself. I think the only thing he did wrong was to say it in front of her mum. But nevertheless, she's very worried. And so the next time we see Emily and Kobe, it's just five days to go to the big day, to the wedding. And they're driving along in the car with Temperature. And yet again, Temperature and Kobe are talking in their own language, mind you, about how Emily needs taming and that Emily must submit to Kobe. Emily shouted, in African, speak in African, what are you guys saying? Yes, I always find that's a mark of a real man. Someone who's too afraid to actually say what they want to say out loud in front of their fiancé. But Emily was very peed off by the fact they were talking in African. And guys, sometimes I think it's quite obvious when somebody's actually talking about you whilst you're there, even though you have no idea what they're saying. And I think Emily picked up on this. And so they arrive at Emily's house. And Temperature and Kobe both moan about the cold. Emily shows them round the house and the three convene in the bedroom. And then Temperature starts up yet again. And he says, this place is cold, man. It's much warmer in Columbus. When you guys move there, I think you'll be much happier. And Emily's like, what? And she's fully taken aback. And she said, Kobe, we are not moving to Ohio. It will be two years until we move there, at the very least. What are you talking about? No one's mentioned this to me. They argue back and forth, with temperature butting his big nose in wherever he can. And Kobe says that he misses the company of other Africans. Oh, really, Kobe? Well, at the rate that you and Emily are producing kids, there'll be a whole African community before very long, right there in Kansas. <laughs> But then, Temperature lets the cat out the bag. He said, soon you'll be having another kid, and it's better that you move. And I think that living in Columbus will be much better for you. Guys, Emily absolutely kicks off. And she shouts at Kobe and said, why did you tell him? Oh my God, I can't believe it. It's supposed to be a secret. And then she said to production, I was very clear with Kobe that no one was to know about my pregnancy. This is a huge violation of trust. Emily, what the F are you talking about? You told Kobe, don't say anything to my family. I want to keep it secret until after the wedding so we can have a nice day. You knew good and well that he disagreed, but that doesn't bother you because you are for all wants and purposes. Temperature's description of the ideal African man. You believe you rule the roost and you also believe that you can deprive other people the right to make their own decisions. So next time we see Emily, she's at home looking after baby Coben and she muses to producers. Maybe Kobe's not happy in Kansas. Possibly it's something we need to talk about. Well, that's good news. It seems like she's, I don't know, being reasonable and at least hearing him out. And guys, then she picks up the iPad and her face turns to thunder. She storms out to see Kobe, who's busy mucking out the horses. And thank the Lord, he's finally worked out how to shovel horse manure. Thank God Emily lives and breathes, otherwise he may never know. And she tells him, I looked on your iPad and I can see that you were looking for one bedroom apartments in Ohio. And he said, um, yeah. And I gotta admit, his face looked a bit, mm, guilty. And she said, I just find it strange. And then Kobe said, well, the first thing is, why were you looking at my iPad? Kobe, you haven't got an iPad. That's Emily's iPad. 
But guys, you know me, this is one of my pet peeves. If I find something, don't ask me why I found it or how I found it. All you need to know is I found it. And then Emily said, we are not moving to Ohio. I'm not comfortable living without my family. We have a child, we've got another one on the way. It's not going to be possible. So of course, Kobe said, let's discuss it later. And she said, no, I want to resolve it real quick. We're not moving to Ohio, I won't do it, and that's that. Oh, Emily, I thought that you just said, maybe we can discuss it. Is that your idea of a discussion? Listening to what the other person says, and then acting as the arbiter. Is that a discussion? I don't think so. So that's everything for this video. So what does the eBird make to all of this? Well, I think this is a very interesting situation, and it's also extremely interesting timing. All of this turmoil just a few days before the wedding. As we know, Emily makes all decisions to do with her and Kobe unilaterally. She consults and listens to nobody. And not only does she make all decisions herself, she's not even diplomatic in the way she goes about it. When she decided, Kobe, you've got to go and sleep in another room. She didn't say, oh, maybe it would be better if you slept in another room for a couple of nights until Coben gets used to it. She just said, you're going to have to get out. You can't sleep here. You're messing up Coben's sleep. Also, when she decided not to tell her parents about the new baby, Kobe expressed to her he was uneasy about telling lies. But nevertheless, she forced it on him anyway. And then when he decided to tell one of his friends, she went absolutely mad and said, I specifically told you not to. She was also so delusional that she said, we agreed not to say anything. There was no agreement. Do you know the meaning of the word? And then again this week, when she decided, not unreasonably, that she didn't want them to move to Ohio, or not any time soon, she said, no, there's just no way, we're not going to Ohio, and that's that. And it's my contention that Emily makes a rod for her own back, because I think one of the main reasons that Kobe is listening to Temperature is because Emily does take every opportunity to emasculate him. But unfortunately for Kobe, we're dealing with two absolute extremes when it comes to Emily and Temperature. According to Temperature, if you give a woman the right to make decisions, you're signing your own death warrant. But Emily's every bit as bad, but on the other end of the spectrum. She treats Kobe like a child, and she thinks every decision is hers to make. And unfortunately, she's creating and fostering an environment where Kobe is completely susceptible to all of Temperature's chit-chat about male dominance. Even though Kobe said, I need to release my inner African prince, something tells me he's nowhere near as misogynistic as temperature. Emily wonders if he's similarly as toxic. I don't think so. But Emily, you could push him that way if he gets more of what you've been giving so far. But you can definitely tell Kobe's been busy talking shit about Emily to temperature because as soon as he met her, he was unready. When he got his first opportunity to say, you tell Kobe what to do, he took it with both hands and ran with it. So what do I think about the move to Ohio? Well, Kobe's never ever been there, so who's to say he's going to like it? I mean, he probably will, just so that he's not underneath Emily's thumb and having to live with her whole family. But a more intelligent way to go about it would be to say, let's wait until I've got my green card and then we can go and visit and see what we think. But guys, on the topic of Ohio, I've got a theory about temperature and temperature's plans. So remember temperature said he came over here on a green card lottery and he's only been in America for just over a year. I think he wants Kobe to move to Ohio just so he has a, a very good friend to hang out with. They've known each other for years apparently. And something tells me from the guilty look on Kobe's face that temperature's been saying, well, you move over here, get a job, leave her there and then send for her. And I think that's why he sent one bedroom flats and not two or three bedroom flats, which obviously they would need. But I think if that ever did happen and Kobe moved and got a job ahead of time, I think temperature would use that opportunity to try and drive a wedge into this relationship. It's just a theory, but Kobe did look quite guilty. And the first thing he said, which is virtually a guilty man's mantra. Why were you looking at my iPad? Something was really off about that scene. But yes, all in all, I don't see this relationship working. Emily is so unreasonable, she literally takes my breath away. Her parents have let her get away with this awful behaviour for however old she is, 27 years, and I don't think she has it in her to change. Kids or no kids, I believe sooner or later, even mild-mannered Kobe will have had his fill of Emily and her antics. But I save my final thought for King Kobe, the royal in waiting. 
Emily's really surprised about this news and she wants to know, how come I never heard about this before? I'll tell you, Emily, why you never heard about it before. Because he's basically the illegitimate child of his dad who probably is a king. And so I've got a feeling that he doesn't have the right to any of his dad's riches or any titles. And so in essence, it's not really worth anything. And that's why he hasn't said anything. But guys, I'd like to know what you think. If it really was worth anything, why would you leave Cameroon? Why wouldn't you stay there and enjoy a lofty status? Do you think temperature's just creating trouble? He doesn't like Emily or the way that she's treating his friend, unsurprisingly. So I think he's trying to put a stick in the spokes. I'd love to hear what you guys think. And also, do you think this relationship can work long term? I just don't see it. To me at the moment, Kobe's just hanging on by the skin of his fingernails, just hoping and praying that things will get better when they move out of Emily's home. But he's not really thinking straight. But I don't think he's got a handle on Emily. She's not going to change. That's my thought. Let me know what you think in comments down below. Guys, thanks so much for listening. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And don't forget to hit that notification bell. Right, I'm going to go on and get on with my next video. You've been listening to eBird Online and I bid you good day. Thank you.